her up. <laughs> Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. See the blazing you'll be for us, fa la 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus, fa la 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 la. Follow me in merry measure, fa la 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 la. While I tell of your dark treasure, fa la 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 la. Fast away the old From the Patricia Lindley Studio in the Patricia Lindley Center for the Performing Arts, welcome to another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes. Today's show is being brought to you by the Wellington Music Store located at 117, 119 West Herrick in downtown Wellington. Today's show is highly, highlighting, highlighting today's show is the fall play called Miracle, The Miracle on 34th Street. And ahead of me on the table, we have Mr. Tim Simonson. He is Judge Harper in the play. Directly across from me, we have Jonah Stump. He's Chris Kringle in the play. And beside me, we have Skylar Kohlenberg. She is working behind the scenes as an audio technician here during the play. So, beginning with the questions, we'll start with you, Tim, since you are the preeminent historian in Wellington. Um, explain the importance of a theater production company within Wellington and uh, the importance of the Lindley Center for all of the productions that we do here at Wellington High School. Well, uh, Wellington has a long history of uh, theatrics and uh, the Lindley Center has been uh, an addition to that tradition, a very good one, too. Uh, well, Jonah, um, you've been in several plays, I know. Uh, and of course, you work on the newspaper and several other things, been involved in athletics. But what actually piqued your interest in acting in the plays? Um, so it's funny, when I was about six years old, my mom asked me if I wanted to audition and I was just like yeah sure whatever I was like unloading the dishwasher or something like that <laughs> and then um so I just like went and did it and it was like whatever and now I've been this is my 10th year doing it mm -hmm. so it just never stopped does it come naturally no, <laughs> <laughs> no do you find it hard to do you find it hard to memorize um, memorization's a, it's like a skill, it gets easier mm -hmm. as you continue to flex it. So like, as we've, like, as I've been in more plays, it helps with, like, more plays, I've memorized more, so it's easier for me to memorize next time because I've done this play, so it's easier to memorize, so it's, it's like well, a circle. Right beside me, we have Skylar, and she works behind the scenes. She's in her second year, and she's a sophomore also. Um, what uh, got you interested in doing this versus in front of the camera? So I've always been involved in theater kind of throughout my life. And high school, ninth grade at the drama club, and we did like this improv show type thing. And I ended up running the, in between like the show acts, we, I ended up running like the music in between and I really found a love for that. So I then got asked to do the Christmas show last year and that was my first show. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, um, I've interviewed you before, actually several times I've interviewed you, but I've interviewed, very interviewed you for Miracle on 34th Street, but you're in a different role this time. Explain your role and who you are. I'm Judge Harper, who's uh, uh, faced with a, a very difficult um, challenge of um, um, proving or disproving Santa Claus. Okay. Politically, it's very hard for me <laughs> to do that. And I know you've been in this play before. What, play, what part did you play then? Well, I played Jonah's part, Chris okay. Kringle. And, uh, and I asked you this question last year, and I'm going to ask Jonah the same question, but I asked you this question last year. Since you are trying to prove or disprove whether this gentleman actually exists and he really is Santa Claus, do you believe in Santa Claus? Of course. Okay, very good. Well, Jonah, um, what other plays have you been in? I know you've talked about the fact that you've been oh. in doing this for 10 years. I've done It's a Wonderful Life quite a few times. Um, been Tommy Bailey a lot. I've been Tommy Bailey three times in that play, I think. Um, last year in the spring, we did Little Shop of Horrors. I was the voice of the man-eating plant. Um, 
Night Watch. Uh, we did The Addams Family, The Lion King. Uh, pretty much any play that we've done uh -huh. for a while now. Have, have you been in all of them? Uh, not all of the recent middle school ones because I just can't do those. But yeah. for the most part, mm -hmm. I've, been in, I've been in a lot of them. Well, Skyler, you work with these people very closely, obviously, because uh, you being the audio tech, they have to be, uh, you know, their, their voices have to come out. They have to reach all into the audience. Um, and there's several people besides yourself that are behind, working behind the scenes. How do you actually mesh with those people to produce uh, the music, the audio, and all the things that are involved behind the scenes? So it's a lot of open communication between us because not all of us are at all the rehearsals. So if Mr. Conklin says something he wants added in, we have to communicate that with each other. So we have a good group that communicates really nicely right now. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, now that we've gone through the background of uh, what's been going on behind the scenes, in front of the camera and things like that, after this commercial, we'll be talking specifically about the play, The Miracle on 34th Street. We'll be back after this message. Wellington Music offers a lot of opportunities for young and old. Whether it's buying a new guitar or renting an instrument for your middle school band member, we can supply you with what you need. We house a variety of popular brands, including, but not limited to, Jim Dunlop, Blackstar, Tajima, and Alvarez. We also have many accessories to help with your technique, from guitar picks, amps and chords, to reeds for your saxophone, and music books for everything in between. For more information, visit our website or call 440-647-3233. Well, Joan, we've already talked about the fact that you are probably the main character in the play, that being Chris Kringle. Uh, introduce your character and tell us the background uh, for you getting into the character itself. Sure, yeah. Um, so Chris Kringle is Santa Claus, or at the very least he believes he's Santa Claus, and so he embodies all of these, all of these qualities like um, joy and like seeing the good in people. There's there are many scenes where he talks about like we have to see the good in these people no matter how bad they might seem to be on the outside mm -hmm. um for me it was a lot about like looking at other people who i think embody that type of thing or other characters like that so i looked a lot at um daniel day lewis's portrayal of lincoln in the movie lincoln mm -hmm. um or just all sorts of different things. And I wanted him to s still be kind of like young, like he looks very old, but sure. I wanted him to still be young and full of like exuberance and energy. And he's like 10 feet tall, is mm -hmm. what I keep thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, um, your character, as, a, as you've already said, you've already been in this play before and you've played Chris Kringle. Now, how did you actually prepare for this particular character, Judge Harper? And you, we talked a little bit before we actually started taping, all of the legal terms that are involved that you have to go through. That's, and that is rough. <laughs> a lot of terms you don't use, but I think I had a, a bit of a um, lead into this. In April, I was in a courtroom on a jury, so oh. it definitely helped. Mm -hmm. So you got, you got stuck with being on, on jury duty, huh? I actually rather enjoyed Did it. Did you really? Well, that's good. Well, Jonah, um, if you could, as I said, I've mentioned the fact that you're probably the main character. Could you go through and give a shout out to the other students that are involved being, or and, and or people in town, the main characters in the play? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, Fred Gailey is the lawyer um, who's defending Santa Claus, and he's played by Drew Denger. Uh, Sophia Palmason is the prosecuting attorney who's trying to put me away. Um, Ali Gott is the mother uh, she runs Macy's and then her daughter is Charlotte Birchfield and they end up playing a big part in not only Fred's character arc, uh, Drew's character, but also in helping me kind of stay strong throughout the trial process. How do you actually determine between the other students or you know, the people up in the booth in setting up the, the, the whole thing? Who's gonna sit where? When is this particular 
music going to take place or the audio taking place? What are the, for lack of a better term, what are the challenges involved working with the other people setting up this particular play? So there's a lot that's going on all at once. So it can get, it's a lot of multitasking, so it can get a lot of confusing at times on what's going on. And if we start to go off track, it can be hard to get back on track with the play and keeping stuff running smoothly. So that's our main challenge we face. Mm -hmm. Well, another hard question for you, Tim. Um, for the people out in the audience, the people that are watching this play out there, what can those people learn from this play? Well, um, to have faith in, uh, in mankind or in their fellow human beings, because there's, there's a lot of that mm -hmm. in the story. Um, that the bad can be undone by the good. Mm -hmm. Are there, are there, is there, is there a situation involved in the play, Tim, where people come into the, the audience and maybe have never, have never seen Miracle on 34th Street, have never seen the movie or the play, and they come in and they say, Santa Claus, I don't believe in Santa Claus. Can we convince them in this play that we believe in Santa Claus? I believe Jonah can convince <laughs> them try my that best. there is a Santa Claus. Uh -huh. Well, then, as I've already said, I already asked him. I've asked him for two years now, the, the two times we've done the play that I've been involved in. Do you believe in Santa Claus? And how do you project that to the audience? I, why not, right? It's, why not? Why not? Um, but how do you actually project that, if, if, if you can from an acting point of view? Uh, like I said, I'm trying to be as um, youthful and exuberant as possible, but I always, I always try to make sure I'm interacting with everyone on stage. Mm -hmm. A lot of times um, we'll talk about giving stuff, like giving lines straight to the audience versus giving lines to uh, actors. Sure. I've tried my best to interact with the actors mm -hmm. around me so that I can like really try to say like, I am here corporeally watching you. Mm -hmm. And like, I am, I am Santa Claus and saintly in that I am watching you and mm -hmm. listening truly to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, um, Skylar, um, we've already obviously mentioned the fact that you work behind the scenes. Now, um, do you project what you do to your friends, to other students? Do you say, I, yeah, I work behind the scenes? Do you try to recruit people to work behind the scenes? How, is, how are you actually involved working with your friends, working with the other students within not only the high school, but the middle school too. So we're always trying to recruit people to become part of theater. We want to grow the program as much as possible. And if the conversation comes up, I will talk about it. And I get really overly excited mm -hmm. sometimes about theater. And I'll talk for a little too long, but yeah. Do you, um, when you, um, for lack of a better term, when you talk about it or when you're actually involved, what, uh, What's the uh, emphasis for yourself? Um, what do you get, for lack of a better term, what do you get out of it? You know, the, the idea behind, well, I work behind the scenes, and they go, oh, you're just not an actor. But that's just as important, working behind, because the whole play will not exist without the people working up in the booth, behind the scenes, and things like that. So what, vicariously, through the actors, how do you get involved and, you know, get yourself all excited about doing it? We try to help them create that scene that, like, this is what's going on. Set the audience in that place and time to try and include them as much as possible in the play. Mm -hmm. And bring them in mm -hmm. and hook them on. Like, this is the scene we're trying to create, and you are now a part of it with us mm -hmm. as we are taking you through this story. One more hard question. I always sit in the back when I look at the plays, and I'm old. I'm going to be 76 years old. I can't hear anymore because I've been around jet engines all my life being a pilot. How do you get them, and how do you, from the audio's point of view, how do you project that all the way out to the back row back there? So we have a lot of speakers that are around the theater that we okay. use, and we try to turn them up as much as possible without compromising the audio quality. Okay. And so that also helps. We also try to get the actors to project a lot mm -hmm. more because that overall is probably the best mm -hmm. source of sound that we can get. Yeah, very good. Well, once again, we'd like to thank Tim, Tim Simonson and Jonah Stump and Skylar Kohlenberg, did I pronounce that, I yes, hope right, for coming in and talking to us about the miracle on 34th Street. Remember that this play is going to be presented here in the Lindley Center 
from November 30th through December 2nd. The doors open at 6.30. The play starts at 7 o'clock, and the cost is, I believe, $6 for students and uh, $11 for adults. We hope that you do come in and enjoy The Miracle on 34th Street, and we will be back again very soon with another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes.